Hello everyone. This video is on robot grippers and inputs and outputs. So I get a lot of questions um, on robot grippers. So I want to cover two different types of grippers that you can put on the robot. We're going to talk about pneumatic grippers and then we're going to talk about servo grippers. So the pneumatic gripper, um, this is, is uh, what I would recommend. I like the pneumatic gripper. It, uh, it has a lot more strength uh, for lifting components and the speed is a lot faster. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, grab parts quickly or lift up a heavier load, I would definitely go with a, a pneumatic gripper. And there's a few components you'll need, um, you know, that we'll talk through here. Uh, first of all, we have the Arduino Nano Board. We've got a relay. We've got a five-way solenoid valve. And then we've got the gripper. And then we've got an air source. So I get quite a few questions on the air source. Um, all I have here is just a uh, three-gallon air compressor that I got from uh, Harbor Freight Tools. Uh, it's fairly inexpensive. And then um, the uh, outlet, the quick disconnect from the um, compressor, I just have that an, an adapter with a push connect fitting uh, to quarter inch uh, pneumatic airline you can see here. And then on the solenoid valve, I have another um, push connect quarter inch uh, going to the center port on the bottom of the valve, as you see there. So we'll talk more about the valve in a minute. Um, I wanted to talk about the Arduino and the relay board. Um, the reason that we have uh, an extra board in the architecture here, this Arduino Nano, is, the, is that the Teensy operates at 3.3 volts. So we're just using the Teensy board to control um, the robot. Now, um, we could use a few of the extra pins of the Teensy to control 3.3 volt devices, and I'll talk about that later. But for the most part, most devices and relays out there, most servo grippers and relays are all 5 volts, and I found all the 5 volt relays to be much more reliable than the 3.3. So I've added the Arduino Nano as a as a device to control and um, monitor um, peripheral devices. Um, so if we open up the manual, pull that out of the way there. If we open up the manual on page 240 is where we go over. Um, wiring the Arduino uh, Nano to the relay board. Um, you can see right here at the top, this is where we're wiring the um, the five volts uh, to the relay. So the power is the relay board. And then right here on output eight is the first output that um, we've allocated. Um, eight through 13 are the pins that I've allocated in the software to control outputs. So you can see that we have that connected um, to the input on the uh, relay board right there. So those are the, um, the connections from the Arduino to the relay board. And then the next thing that we need to connect from the relay, as you can see here, I have um, connected, you can see this black wire here. That black wire goes from the negative terminal on my 24 volt power supply, and it goes directly to one of the terminals on the solenoid valve. And I'll show a picture of that here in a minute. And then for the positive power to the solenoid valve, we have um, this red wire you can see here is run from the positive 24 volts on the power supply up to the center terminal on the relay. And then from the top terminal on the relay, that 24 volts is passed back down to the solenoid valve. So basically this relay just turns the 24 volts, the positive 24 volts on and off to this uh, solenoid valve. So if we look at the manual on, I believe, page 255. I have some notes here on robot grippers that cover some of this. Um, and you can see these are, this is the red wire and the black wire. This is, this red wire is coming from the relay to the um, solenoid valve. And this black wire goes to the um, ground on the 24 volt power supply. And what I wanted to point out here is this flyover diode. A lot of times when these solenoid valves um, actuate, they open and close, um, they create some noise interference that can disrupt your Arduino um, and the Teensy's uh, serial connections and actually shut them off. So this flyover diode that's installed here um, helps keep that, uh, eliminates that noise that happens. So I've got some notes here on um, the flyover diode and then there's a link in the manual to um, some more information on a flyover diode and installing that. So now let's talk about the five-way solenoid valve itself. 
Um, these valves are fairly low cost. Um, here's an example of uh, one that you can get on Amazon for $17. It comes with um, some quick disconnects and some mufflers uh, to keep it quiet. Um, these are the mufflers right here, these cold things. Um, these are available in different voltages, 12, 24, 110. Um, I'm using 24, obviously, because we have a 24 volt power supply in our uh, enclosure. Uh, but you can use any uh, power supply that you want to supply to the, um, uh, you know, to the relay. It doesn't have to be the 24 volts. And then you can select your uh, port size there. Um, the plumbing to the valve, it's, it's called a five-way valve because when the gripper opens or closes, air is going to be sent out to one side. And then um, when the um, valve is opening or closing, it's also exhausting air back out the other side, so that air has to exhaust out one of these two ports here. And that's what those mufflers are for. I don't, I don't have any right now, um, but you'll hear in a minute, this um, is pretty loud when the gripper opens and closes if you don't have the mufflers installed. But um, the top two ports here, these two ports are the two that will be um, plumbed to the gripper. And then these bottom two ports are where the um, air exhausts out and um, that's where the mufflers would go to keep the noise down. And then, of course, they're just uh, the output is just plumbed directly to the uh, to the gripper itself. Um, this gripper is an SMC gripper. Uh, this is uh, the gripper that the um, the robots Joint Six tool adapter is designed for. This this whole pattern is designed for this SMC gripper. But you can use any pneumatic gripper you want. You can drill and tap new holes in this. Uh, as you see fit, or you could make an, a 3D printed adapter to put on there, but you can put any gripper you want on this pad. You don't have to use only this uh, gripper right here. Uh, so now with the uh, pneumatics all hooked up to the solenoid valve and the solenoid valve wired to our relay, we can now um, control our gripper. Obviously, I just have it um, sitting here on the table uh, for this video, but you would have this on your robot and you would have these airlines uh, routed all the way up through the base of your robot and you can mount the valve wherever you want um, away from the robot. So um, we can go to the input outputs page and we here we have a DO on and a DO off and I've entered in the number eight because we're using output number eight, which is the first one available to us. And um, you can see when I hit on, the gripper closes. When I hit off, the gripper opens. And you can hear that's pretty loud because I don't have mufflers uh, plugged in there, but the mufflers will help uh, keep that sound um, down. And then from the software, if you want to control the gripper, um, you would come in here into the software, and um, I've just got a test program here, and you can come in here to the set output on, and I'm going to put in a number 8 for output number 8 and set output off. And so I will go here into my program and I will set the output on. And then I could, you know, add some motion or whatever I wanted. And then I could set the output off. So now when I execute these lines, when I um, execute on, the gripper closes. And when I execute the line off, the gripper opens. So that's all of the information for the pneumatic gripper. Next, I wanted to talk about uh, servo grippers. I have an example set up here with a servo gripper that I purchased online. Uh, servo grippers are available in a number of different voltages. Typically, they're 5 volts, but they can be um, up to 10 or more volts. Um, this particular gripper I have here is a 10-volt servo gripper. This gripper has a plug that has a black, a red, and a white wire. Um, servos can come in a few different color schemes. This particular one is black, red, and white. So the black is ground, the red is power, and the white is the control signal. Um, a lot of times you will see ones that are brown, red, and orange. The brown is uh, ground, the red is power, and the orange is the control signal. And in some of the other ones, uh, the, the high-tech models, um, the ground is black, the red or brown, is power and the yellow or white is the um, is the control signal so um, in this case here I have a black a red and a white um, 
And then you can see over here, I have a couple alligator clips that are uh, connected to a 10 volt power supply. So I have 10 volts coming on um, the red and the black wire. So you, um, you know, depending on what the voltage is for your gripper, if it's something over five volts, you will need a power supply. If it's five volts, if it's a five volt um, gripper, you could power it directly from the Arduino Nano. And I'll go over that in a few minutes. But right now, um, with this 10 volt gripper, um, we have 10 volts right here. The red wire from the gripper goes directly to the positive uh, power supply of the 10 volts. The um, black wire from the servo goes to the uh, negative uh, or ground of the 10 volt power supply, but the Arduino um, Nano's ground needs to be shared. It needs to be a shared ground. So you can see I have a ground wire connected from the Nano over to the um, black alligator clip so that the servo um, and the uh, Arduino are sharing a ground with the uh, with the power supply. And then our signal wire, our white wire, I have that connected to analog input zero on the um, sketch for the Arduino Nano. I've allocated um, the um, analog pins uh, zero through seven for our eight different uh, channels that we could use so I'm just using the first one I just have that uh, connected to analog zero so that's how I have this gripper wired right now and if we look at the software um, in the um, control software we have this function for servo so I'm going to put uh, servo zero since we're on channel zero and typically your servos will go from 180 degrees uh, to zero degrees. So I'm going to first add that command. So now I've got servo number zero to position 180 and then I'm also going to add servo zero to position zero and I'll add that to my program and then I'll bring the video back down here. So now when I execute this first line the gripper closes. When I execute the second line the gripper opens so we can just basically control the position of our servo like that. And if you needed to, you can also with a servo, you could control um, the servo to be you know, halfway open uh, to an intermediate position. For example, I could do servo zero to let's say 90 degrees and we'll add that to our program. And if we execute that position, the gripper opens halfway. So you can control a servo gripper. That's kind of the cool thing about using a servo gripper is it's not just open or close. You can control any position and it doesn't necessarily have to be a gripper. It could be any type of an actuator. So now in this example, um, I just have a five volt servo. This isn't attached to a gripper, obviously, but it was just a, a five volt servo, servo that I had laying around. Um, this one has the uh, brown, red, and orange color scheme on the plug. So um, I have the brown wire connected to the ground on the Arduino Nano. I have the red wire connected to the 5 volt terminal on the Arduino Nano. And then the orange wire, the signal wire, I have the orange wire um, connected to um, the uh, analog uh, pin 0 on the um, nano the same as the last example we just don't have the 10 volt power supply in this case um, and so you can see here um, I've got the same code and if I execute the first line the servo moves um, to the vertical position and if I execute the zero position it moves 180 degrees from that position so that just demonstrates hooking a 5 volt servo directly to the um, nano um, not using an external power supply. I also wanted to talk about inputs and um, how those are wired up to the Arduino board. Um, you can see here I have a limit switch wired up to the Arduino Nano and I have this limit switch wired up in the same fashion that the um, all the limit switches are wired on the robot and that is uh, three wires um, from the switch. So um, the red and the black wires, um, I have the red wire going to uh, a positive 5 volt 
uh, terminal on the uh, board right here. The top left terminal is positive 5 volts, and that is going to the, um, the normally open contact on the switch that's labeled NO. And then the black wire is the ground, and it is wired to the normally closed or the terminal uh, on the switch that is labeled NC. And then I have a gray wire here wired from input number two on the Arduino Nano. Um, and that is wired to the common uh, terminal on the switch or the one that's uh, labeled COM. So the way this works is that when the switch is open like it is right now when it is not made or not contacted, the switch is passing uh, the ground signal from the normally closed contact through to the common and back to the um, Arduino. So right now this uh, Arduino input 2 is receiving a ground signal, so it is, a, it is being pulled down to ground and it is um, off. When I press and depress the switch, it's going to switch from sending a ground signal to the Arduino to sending a positive 5 volts. The switch is going to click over from uh, ground to positive 5 volts and it will send past the positive 5 volts through the gray wire to input 2 and then input 2 will be on. Now the reason we're pulling it to ground anytime it is not made is that um, microcontrollers and Arduinos are very susceptible to floating voltage meaning that if you just wired a standard two wire switch if you just had a, a regular two wire switch such as uh, this one here that just has two wires um, what would happen is it would not behave as you expect you could uh, the program would pick up the Arduino would pick up floating voltage and it would just kind of intermittently uh, falsely detect positive and pick up um, floating voltage. So um, there's a lot of uh, information online on that, on uh, um, on floating voltage, or you can look on the Arduino forums and look at um, stuff about um, pull up and pull down resistors. Um, so you could use a two wire device, you just have to install a, 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 a pull up or pull down resistor and you can find a lot of information online about how to wire those up. But in this case, I just wanted to illustrate a basic three wire the way that the robot is wired um, to illustrate that. So in the program, in the software here, um, I have created a program here. I just called it test and I've put in some comments, just some star comments in it. And that'll just let you see the cursor move. And then I have um, added an instruction called wait input on uh, two, And that is... Um, to create that line there we have the um, right here this button wait input on I put in two and I just click that button to put in wait input on so when I um, hit play on that you can see that the cursor just moves to that line and stops right there now this could be um, you know you could you could wire up this input to any type of a button it doesn't have to be a limit switch it could be a push button or a start button so if you wanted your robot to um, not start until you pressed a button, if you wanted, you know, a button to start your, uh, you know, to start your uh, your program or whatever you're doing, you could put a wait input on at the very top of your program, press play, and then when you depress, um, when you press this button, which I'll do now, when you press it, you can see the uh, program will move on uh, from that point. So that's a good way to. Uh, you know to have a start button for your robot now the other uh, one of the other functions I wanted to show was the um, if on jump functionality so I have another program that I've created here as an example so in this program we start at the top I have tab number one and then it's going to go down and it's going to evaluate this function if on jump and it's going to say if input 2 is on jump to tab 2 otherwise keep going and it's going to hit this jump to tab one and it's going to come back up here and it's just going to keep running in this loop and every time it's going to evaluate if that switch is made or not so you know these asterisks uh, here are just comments that you can see the cursor move through that would represent where you might have some robot motion where you know the robot might be doing something and if this switch is made you might want to jump down to this tab and do some different motion down in here otherwise you would just do this motion and then jump back up so I will um, show you that here. If I hit play on that, it's going to evaluate, and each time it hits it, it sees that the switch is off, so it continues on, 
and jumps back up to tab number one and it just keeps running through this loop. Now as soon as I depress the switch, it's going to jump down here to tab two and start running this logic. So I'm going to do that now. I'll click the switch and now you can see that with that switch made, it has jumped down and is running that logic here. The last thing I wanted to go over in this video is using IO directly on the Teensy board. Um, so if you did not want to install a uh, Arduino Nano to control uh, a five volt device or to receive a five volt input and you did want to just use 3.3 volts, that is possible. Um, I allocated the remaining pins, uh, pins 32 through 41 on the Teensy board for IO. Uh, most of the I.O. on this board is consumed um, with limit switches and, and drivers, um, but I did make pins 32 through 36 available for inputs and 37 through 41 are available for outputs. Um, so uh, I don't have any 3.3 volt devices, but I did. Um, I do have my multimeter set up and I am connected um, to pin 37 on the positive lead of the multimeter and I'm connected to ground on the negative lead of the multimeter. Um, so I'll demonstrate um, that now. Um, in the software, um, I did not make any specific buttons for the Teensy because I did not think that would be as common, but it. Uh, uh, but I'll show you how to change the command to control the Teensy I.O. So we were setting the output on for um, uh, output number eight um, earlier. So um, we're going to change that to 37. And so I will press the button and put, put that command into my program. But we're going to we're going to modify that a little bit to make it um, work for the Teensy. So I'm going to hit get selected and then I'm going to edit this uh, out on command and we're going to change that. And that is going to be a um, capital T and then out capital O N. So that is the uh, the uh, command to control the, the teensy output on. And so then we will just hit replace. And so now this command, when I execute this command, let me pull the uh, camera back down here. So when we execute that command, you can see that output 37 we now have 3.3 volts on that output and we can uh, do the same thing for um, turning it back off I'll change that to a 37 and then I will click set output off and then I'll hit get selected and we will modify that line and we're gonna modify that Let me delete that and we are going to do a capital T for Teensy and then lowercase out and then capital OF and we will replace that line of code there. And so now when we execute that line, the voltage turns back off. So now I also have custom functions available um, for the other um, input output commands here for the weight input on and weight uh, input off as well as the if on jump and the if off jump. Um, those are also available for Teensy pins. Um, I don't have anything set up to demonstrate that but I do have a document that I will be putting on the website that is um, just a, uh, a document that covers the serial commands for the robot. This document um, shows you some examples of the serial commands that you would use if you were using serial command software. And at the bottom of this document, we have the input output commands for the um, serial commands. If you were using, you know, something like cool terminal or something like that, and you wanted to directly control the robot, all these, um, this document kind of gives you those, uh, um, you know, commands that you would send. But at the bottom of this document, I included the AR4 software commands for IO. And um, so these are what you would change the commands in the software to. So I, we just demonstrated the T out on and the T out off. If you were waiting for an input or waiting for an output, um, that's here and here. And then if you were using the um, Teensy for the if on or if off commands, you would change the commands to, um, to these uh, strings here. So that... Um, is I think everything I wanted to go over on grippers and IO. So um, 
please uh, email me if you have any questions and thank you for watching